Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have had Dark Raiden in the game for a week now. Most players should have unlocked him by now, and you may be getting some mixed results. I know when I went through the kit, he seemed really overpowered, but I feel that some players may or may not be getting the results they think that they should be getting. So today I'm going to show you how to build him, I'm going to test him out in a couple of different areas, and I'm going to give my thoughts on the best ways that I feel that you can put him to use. Now the first thing to note if you are still fairly new to the game and just working your way through those chapters, you don't have to go and spend a whole heap of green orbs trying to summon him. As soon as you get to chapter 10, he will be summoned onto your roster for free at 5 stars and he will be automatically upgraded to level 100. If you do have the spare affinity souls and you do want to take him up to 6 stars and level him up to 120, you'll have to spend those resources yourself and that's completely up to you if you want to do that. For the sake of the test today, I'm going to leave him at 5 stars, but if you do want to take him further, that's completely up to you. The first thing we're going to dive into is his abilities. Now, I've been able to max out everything. I've been saving up these tomes forever, needing someone to spend them on, so why not spend them on Dark Raiden? If you don't have the gold tomes, that's perfectly fine. Just upgrade his abilities as high as you can. If you do have some gold tomes, though, try and upgrade that special ability all the way up to maximum, because once you get it there, He's going to be doing a total damage of 898% of his attack. The critical chance boost that he gives himself and the other demigods lasts for 15 seconds, so that should be long enough for them to get their special moves away. He has 12 second stun duration, additional damage of 220% of his attack, knocked down for 14 seconds, and the charge time is only 17.8 which is very, very fast getting to that special ability. So upgrading that to maximum is definitely a must. Now let's take a look at his gear because this is the most important part of the build. If you get this wrong, he just may not function the way that you want. What I am running on him is a crit chance and crit damage set. Now as a general rule, what you're trying to do with crit chance is get that above 50%. For most warriors or assassins, if you can get that above 50%, that's when you would use the crit damage set. If you can't get it above 50%, that's where you'd normally use an attack set. An attack set will still work quite well on him if you don't have the gear pieces needed. However, because his special ability does give him 100% critical chance, meaning as soon as you hit that special, you're guaranteed that critical hit, you want to take advantage of as much damage as you possibly can. But we're not going to ignore that critical chance either. Because he can deal so much damage, you really want to be trying to hit those critical hits as much as you possibly can, even without that special ability being triggered. And the way that you're going to do that is on your weapon piece, what you're going to be looking for is the primary stat of critical chance. Now what you can see with mine is it's only a 2 star purple piece, the maximum crit chance on that is 20%. I believe if it is a 4 star you can get that up to 25% critical chance. And you are absolutely going to have to get this gear piece all the way up to level 15, so you get that maximum critical chance out of it. This is going to go a long way to getting to that 50% just by this one gear piece. From the set itself, you're also going to get another 12% critical chance. From there, what you're going to want to do on all the other gear pieces is have a look at all the secondary stats. If you do have things that have that critical chance secondary stat on it, whatever you can add is going to be a bonus. And for all the other gear pieces, you want to be able to level them up to a minimum of level 12, so you've unlocked all of your substats on all the gear pieces. So that's level 15 on the weapon, level 12 on everything else, but you do want to try and get everything to level 15 if you can to maximize all the stats off your gear. 
Now, just to show you where I'm at, you can have a look here. You can see that I'm at 43% critical chance just from the gear upgrades. So to get up to that 50% mark, we're going to turn to our relic now to do that last little bit. Now I've had a look through a few of my relics and the one that stood out the most for what I have in store is the Outworld Komidogu. Now just on that, if you're not getting the epic relics from the Chronicle events, you're really missing out. It doesn't matter whether you've summoned the character or not, always get both of the epic relics from the store while you're doing that Chronicle event because they can come in handy for so many other characters down the track. But this has a few handy stats here. You've got dodge and attack as the primary. You've got health and critical damage as another effect. But if you have a look down right near the bottom here, the last effect that this has here for every unique active class in the team, and class is your warrior, your assassin, defender, attacker, support, or sniper. And you're always going to have a variety of them in your team, so you're always going to get this stat the wielder is going to gain 7.5% critical chance, which can stack up to three times. So we only need to get that once and we're over that 50% mark. So that is how I've built him. If you don't have this particular relic, look through what you do have and pick out whatever is going to give you the best critical chance boost. If you're already over that 50%, you don't necessarily have to worry. You can look for things like attack and critical damage that you can build into this and just maximize that damage output. Now, if you do have any specific questions on how to build him, pop it in the comments below. I'll try and help everybody out as best as I can. But let's get into some testing. And the place that I want to start with is that Quan Chi boss battle. Because his kit is focused on destroying the Netherrealm team, this is a great place to test him out because you do have to face quite a lot of enemies. We are doing level 8 of Quan Chi here. Now, I know that a lot of you are going to be asking questions about the arena, so while we're watching this footage play through, I'm going to talk about my testing of the arena. I did run a few matches there. The thing that I did notice is he will definitely work better when you do have Fire God Liu Kang and Wind God Fujin in the team. I do not have either of them, so I couldn't really put together a decent team to show you guys what he can do. I didn't want to insult your intelligence by showing you how many battles I could win when I sub him into an MK1 team because they do all the heavy lifting and you don't really get to see much of what Raiden can do there. Now I have come up against him a few times. I haven't come up against a demigod team. If I ever see one, I will be trying that one out just to see how strong they are. I don't really care if I lose just as long as I can get that information for you guys. But the one thing that I have noticed is that he really doesn't have a lot of synergy with other characters. So just putting him in your arena defense just because you've put a lot of resources into him doesn't really make him a good character. I tend to be able to get rid of him pretty quickly out of the battle. Even when he does revive himself, you can cut him down pretty quickly again after that. So he's not really all that effective just by himself in the arena. Now I'm not trying to tell you guys not to work on him because he is still a pretty decent character. I have a feeling that we may see other characters come into the game that will work much better with Dark Raiden. Maybe we'll end up getting Cetrion, Garrus, and maybe even Kronika in the game at some stage. They would all fall under that demigod tag and he could be very effective in some of those teams down the track. So putting resources into him early may not necessarily be a bad thing, but you're gonna need to put some resources into him to get through that story mode anyway, so there's no harm in spending some resources there. Now back to this current battle that I'm showing you here, the Quan Chi boss battle. As you can see, the problem that you tend to have with this battle is characters getting stuck hitting Quan Chi while he's invisible, while your backline is getting ripped apart by the remaining Oni, rather than going and attacking the characters that are still there. 
but in terms of how well Dark Raiden does in this particular battle, as you can see, he's holding up pretty well. Hasn't really taken any damage there, and any damage that he has has been easily healed. So he is able to take on quite a lot of these Oni, but with his special, it doesn't really have a great area of effect like it seemed that it would when we were reading out his kit. So enemies do have to be quite close together to really get much out of that. But he should be able to take out this battle pretty easily. So if you're struggling to get through the Quan Chi boss battle, definitely get him in there. He will work quite well. And guys, if you do want to support the channel, a super thanks would be very much appreciated. Other than that, guys, like and sub, you know the deal. We've got plenty more Onslaught coming your way. Don't miss out, and we'll catch you in the next one.